so far, this has been uh, just another great conference experience. I have to say, one of my favorite things about attending conferences is getting time to be able to spend with the people in the community. Uh, we get to see and talk, well, we get to see sometimes to talk to each other online, but uh, the experience of being able to get together and work together on something. The ideas that come about when, you know, one project that you might be working on collaborates with another, or uh, everybody who comes has the opportunity to produce dependencies or packages that they're passionate about. And we get to see how they all work together. Uh, yesterday, we saw uh, Jose talk, uh, and it really stuck with me, one of the things that he was talking about, which was basically that this concept of, of community, like it's up to us to be able to build the cool projects and packages that's really going to drive things forward. And so to summarize things with this, it sort of comes together with uh, uh, the training that we've done earlier in the week. We had uh, two different NERVS training classes in, con in, in, in conjunction with a lot of the other uh, uh, great offerings that there were. And in those uh, classes, uh, we learned about being able to produce uh, cameras uh, that could uh, have cool effects and scan barcodes. And uh, this one, this tweet here, I believe, really captures the feeling that a lot of us get in the community, where it's not just about you know, who's using Nerves, or it's not just about who's using Phoenix, or, or, or who's using this package. Seeing it all come together to be able to solve this wide range of problems uh, is just immensely powerful. And seeing this was uh, fantastic. Some of the people you get to talk to, you may not be able to get contact with all the time. And it was great seeing Chris McCord again. Uh, one of the things he said to me about that, uh, that training class is, uh, yeah, Nerves took Phoenix Sketchpad and made it even cooler. I couldn't tell if he was, you know, <laughs> angry. <or laughs> I've got more hardware for you, Chris. Don't worry. <laughs> but that's, uh, the project that we built there it was a, a touchscreen kiosk. Um, over the last year, I've, I've been enjoying uh, using them myself, uh, getting ready for the training and getting ready for this event. I've started installing them all across my house. Um, I decided that I was tired of waiting for the E. coli scare for lettuce to get uh, solved, so I'd, I'd, I'd started growing fresh lettuce in my office myself. And I needed a way to be able to control the uh, light cycles for the timers um, for uh, the pumps and uh, the growing system. So I, uh, you can see in the background in there, um, I installed one of the kiosk devices, and um, it runs uh, growing fresh lettuce for me. It's fantastic. I also decided that wasn't the end of it. I'll just keep putting them around my house. I installed one on my kegerator so that I could uh, understand how cold the uh, temperature of my, my beer is. But this idea, this feeling of being able to get together and have community, I mean, it's not just like it, certain individuals that, that, uh, uh, that matter. I mean, everybody's contribution matters. That's a wonderful thing about open source software. And so we saw this tweet from Martin Gosby. One of the ways to help out with open source is to casually mention it during a keynote or at a major programming conference. I, I think Martin does a package um, that he's working on. I, I can't quite remember the name of it. Mm. It has something with turtles. Actually, yeah. It's not just that, though. I mean, there's so many different packages that have arose that, that help out in the hardware realm that people have come up with. And this is just a small bit of them. By the way, Martin's is on there. It's Tortoise. He does our MQTT stuff. And seeing these, uh, it's, just, it's just great, because now we have all of these tools in addition to be able to say, like, you know, you want to interface with uh, uh, cellular networks, or you want to interface with uh, touch, uh, the displays, or um, uh, you want to be able to play around with um, modules uh, like Grove Pi, and uh, you need like Wi-Fi networks. Like, like all of these things now are available for you to be able to pick and choose from and, and bring into your project. And, and having the ability in our ecosystem to just solve this wide range of problems is just so fantastic. You can see more. Uh, that we try to curate a page as best as possible uh, and keep up with all of the new things that are coming out on the uh, NERVS Project uh, website. We hold uh, um, a list of all the libraries that we uh, think might be interesting to hardware developers. And so 
we have this feeling of like, what can you do? What can you build with nerves? You know, what, uh, what kind of thing can you create? Because it really is about all of the different things that the people in the community can produce. Here's a selection of screenshots of uh, uh, different projects that people have created. At different conferences, we've seen stuff like um, the quad con uh, a quadcopter controlled by Elixir, you know, running nerves, um, tablets. Uh, that's a Lego system that sorts bricks based off their color. People are modifying their cars using Elixir. And so all of this, like we really want people to feel that uh, hardware is less scary with all of this experience that we're all putting together and working together on. We want, we want people to feel that they can build this stuff too. You know, not, if, if you're just working on Phoenix applications, you should be able to leverage the same sort of concepts. Like, you love working in Elixir and you love working on Phoenix apps, then you'll probably also love also working on some hardware stuff. And so we want to make it a little clearer uh, what it is, what, like, what NERVS is. Like, and from the top, let's take a look at how we distribute uh, Elixir applications. Uh, we've all heard a lot about releases and uh, how we want to be able to make those, uh, uh, continue to work together to be able to make those a more integral part of the, uh, the language. Um, so in your tradi traditional Elixir application, you're just going to take your Elixir app, may have Phoenix, may have anything else, and you're going to create an OTP release. And in this case, we're just going to distribute it onto a web server. Well, with NERVS, all we're doing is pretty much the same thing. You take your Elixir app, and you make an OTP release, and you put it onto an embedded device. So this is sort of what we talk about when we talk really about what NERVS is. It's just a way to be able to take familiar tooling and language and produce similar results, but running on hardware, like different kinds of hardware. Instead of web servers, we can run on Raspberry Pis. Now, this isn't the only way to get familiar or work on these kinds of hardware uh, elements. Uh, let's talk about what is not NERVS. Well, when you're working on devices, sometimes it's nice to be able to just load up a full environment and, and like poke at things. It's kind of like when you're debugging any application. You want to be able to have as much tools as possible at your disposal. So oftentimes, you'll hear us talk about uh, Easy ways to debug problems outside of NERVS is perfectly acceptable to take Raspbian, for example, which is the uh, standard Raspberry Pi distribution, fire it up, and then be able to just plug some stuff in and poke at it. And, and you know, uh, we do this a lot uh, on core team work and um, uh, helping out other companies. You know, the question usually comes up like, hey, it's not really quite working when I distribute it using NERVS. It's like breaking, but, and we're like, well, if you tried it on Raspbian, because sometimes, uh, what's missing, we can determine what's missing and then bake it back into the minimal image that we're producing when we go to run it on the device. Other uh, sources out there for working on embedded uh, running Elixir uh, and uh, Erlang, uh, there's a project called Grisp, and uh, Grisp is pretty cool. It does a, a real-time OS, at, and uh, this uh, runs on a certain series of uh, uh, microcontroller boards. The uh, problem that's being solved here that's a little different is um, NERVS runs embedded Linux, which gives you uh, soft real-time guarantees. And if you have more uh, hard real-time uh, needs, uh, like you need to interface with some device or some sensor that uh, has a really strict timing and it needs to have a run on a real-time uh, system, uh, GRISP is uh, uh, working to be able to do that. So what else is not NERVS? Well, NERVS is not going to run on, a, on a, uh, an Arduino, like microcontrollers. You know, it's uh, a little too small, but sometimes you need to be able to use these as well. So uh, strategies uh, are out there to be able to uh, use Elixir and Erlang and NERVS-based distributions to do what they do best, to supervise other connected hardware. And because when we think about OTP and applications and the distributed process models that we have, um, you can kind of just, if you zoom out slightly, you can think like, oh, I can have a Raspberry Pi and I can have an Arduino. And the Raspberry Pi, it can just supervise the work that the Arduino is doing. It's like thinking of process supervision as a physical model. So what is NERVS? This is NERVS. 
When we talk about it, we're talking about it being a, 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 a delivery mechanism, deployments, deploying it onto embedded hardware. Is this NERVS? It's got NERVS in the name. NERVS UART is a package that was put out to be able to communicate with serial ports. Well, and that's this, this is where we start to get into the split. First off, naming is hard. And second off, uh, as we mentioned, the delivery, when we talk about what we did with NERVS, the compile time stuff, NERVS UART is on the runtime side. So there's a whole gamut of packages that we saw earlier that you can use at the runtime to be able to help you uh, integrate with different things. And so what we did recently over the last couple of years, we've been working sort of uh, from the ground up with things, the compiler aspect of it, that, that portion of NERVS that we talk about, which is the, to build the OTP release and then put it into runtime. Well, over the last year, we've worked really hard and finally put out NERVS 1.0. NERVS 1.0 was released on, in May of 2018 uh, with over 4,000 commits across 14 repositories uh, by uh, over uh, 100 contributors. It was quite a big effort. And so that's the portion that we talk about, that compile time portion, 1.0. Now it's time to work our way up the, up the rest of the stack. So we built and stabilized the compilers, and we create an OTP release, and we're pushing that off into the devices. And in that process, uh, we sort of saw this, this problem when it comes to getting it over to the runtime. So let's say we've got this neat device that we've created. All right, and we're, we're so happy with it. It does this incredible feature. Uh, everybody's going to want one, so we're like, let's get this thing out into production and start mass manufacturing it so we can ship it and get it out the door, send it to people. All right, so it gets into the consumer's hands, and we go back into our desks, and we realize, OK, I'm typing away. Oh, there was a bug in the code. Uh-oh, what are we going to do? Well, we fix it. And then once everything's good, we're going to use uh, uh, a friendly mechanism that we have to push that to our device that is on our development uh, workstation right next to us. And we can test it out. We can see that we fixed the bug and everything's good. Now we want to be able to get that bug fix out to uh, the rest of the people who have these items in the field. So guess what? The mechanisms that we have at our disposal, pushing over SSH, doesn't really work going to the cloud. Because everybody's going to be protected usually by their own firewalls, and the devices are going to be in the different networks. And so accessibility to them to be able to ensure that we can keep these products up to date became a real problem. And a lot of us who are shipping nerves in production, uh, we're realizing this kind of pain. We've got these neat devices. We want to manufacture them and get them out there. You know? But how do we deploy nerves became the question. And so. I'm extremely happy that I get to share this with you today on what we've been working on as an answer to our method of being able to solve the deployment for NERVS, which we're calling NERVS Hub. So what is NERVS Hub? Well, NERVS Hub is, at a top level, a web service built with Phoenix that allows you to be able to connect a device as well as other devices that you may have out in the field so you can manage the firmware that's on them. So the first thing you do with Nerves Hub is you'll take your devices and you'll create a device group or a deployment group. And in this case, we're going to take this group of devices and we're going to say those are our production devices that we have out in the field. And it allows us then to uh, go back to our desks, continue to code, and when we want to be able to distribute uh, the firmware to these devices, then right from the command line, we can say NERVSUB firmware publish. And what that does is it packages up your firmware, it sends it securely to NERVSUB, and then with your devices connected using Phoenix channels, it'll distribute that down to those devices, upgrade them, and then they'll just connect back up and be ready again. But we're not going to send this right to prod. We're responsible, right? We're responsible to the group of developers. So, not only can you create 
uh, with, the, with the ability to create deployment groups, we have the capability then of saying like, okay, let's have some test devices that we keep on hand. Let's have a group of quality assurance devices that may run some additional tests so that we can ensure that the code that we write is not going to uh, cause harm when we inevitably distribute it then uh, to uh, production. It helps when you swipe the right way. <laughs> so from here, from the command line, we can actually just say, uh, pass a flag. Which deployment group do we want to deploy this to? And similar to a, a CI pipeline, we can sort of uh, send it to one deployment group and then gather results and then push it to the next deployment group until inevitably we get our firmware out to production. So how do we communicate? How do we connect? Well, security is really important to us. And so from the ground up, we decided that we wanted to use a mechanism we're calling, uh, that's a, a client-side SSL. It's been around for a while. And it's important here that uh, when thinking about client-side SSL, the way that this works is um, traditionally with the web, you have server-side SSL, where the client validates that it's talking to the right server. Uh, with client-side SSL, uh, both ends are validated. So the client validates that the server is who they say they are, and the server will then also validate that the client is saying who they are. So this allows, uh, this security uh, goes even further in the way that we generate that secure connection. So in order to connect a device to NerveSub, we need to then generate a, a SSL certificates that represent the client that are signed by the server. And when we do that, uh, we make sure that we generate all the private keys locally on your development machine, and then the only thing that we do is we send a certificate signing request across, and then you get back the public keys, uh, and then you can put those under the device. So the secret portions of things never touch our, uh, the NerveSub server. This also goes for creating user accounts. Uh, when you go to work through the command line to push and publish firmware to NerveSub, uh, we use the same mechanisms to validate that those API requests are coming from who you say that you are. So we do the same thing. We generate the secrets on your machine, and we send back the matching pair and password protect it uh, using uh, the same cryptography that uh, Hex is using as well to ensure that that's safe on your machine. To go one step further, we require that all firmware that gets pushed to NerveSub is signed with an additional signing key. And what that, mean, what that allows you to do is that when new firmware comes in across the wire, uh, not only is that protected uh, over uh, SSL, that, that communication, but when you receive that firmware, uh, before it goes to apply it, it checks to make sure that the signing key, which also never leaves your machine, uh, says that it's coming from you, the trusted source. And this is important because you can have many different kinds of signing keys. So certain people in your development group may only have access to the test group signing keys, and you can really limit the scope of who has access then to the production signing keys. The public key information in those is, is only the, the only information that we share with the server then. So how do we do this? Well, we have to take the certificate, we put it on the device, and then we need to get the device to be able to connect to NerveSub using, using client-side SSL. And this is where the work, like, like the feeling of being able to work together with a group of, uh, of everybody in the community uh, came in. The effort spanned across multiple projects to get this to work. We had to, do change, uh, we had to apply changes in nerves, uh, and, and work with Phoenix and also work with changes in Elixir to be able to uh, get the SSL certificate that we have on the device to be able to get access to it all the way up in the Phoenix application. So let's take a look at some of these changes starting with what we had to do in uh, NERVS project. First off, what we have today is when you're done with your pro uh, well, building firmware, you want to burn it to an SD card so that you can plug it in devices and try it out. And if you were to be able to just say, I want to burn this to many SD cards because I want to build a lot of devices that I can distribute, then uh, the, the issue is that all of those SD cards, they're going to contain the exact same bit of firmware, but those SD cards are going to get plugged into three different machines that we all don't, that we don't want all three of them to be called the same thing. They shouldn't all have the same serial number. That serial number needs to be unique. And so there was another phase that was added for provisioning. 
When you go to burn the SD card, you can pass additional information at that time in to apply as provisioning information so that you can add some uniqueness for identification purposes when you burn it. In this case, we're setting the serial number of this device to A001. So when we call burn, it applies that to that SD card, and we can go on our way. This is a common step that you'd find in the manufacturing process. Now, with NerveSub, because we're using certificates, you can, as you can see, it would be very long-winded uh, argument lists before you uh, call firmware burn if you were to stuff certificates in there. Uh, so to make it easier, we added a new feature in uh, the configuration for NERVS firmware for provisioning. And what this key allows you to do is uh, it allows you to be able to specify your own custom config for provisioning information, or you can uh, add a, uh, an, an atom in this case that's representative of an application and delegate provisioning to that application. So in this case, we're delegating the provisioning of this firmware to NERVS Hub. So what that does is allows you to then tell Nerves Hub you want to create the device, which generates a new certificate. And then you can make the call uh, Nerves Hub device burn with the identifier of your device. And it does the work for you. It applies the serial number and applies the certificates to that SD card. So now we have our certificate, and we've got it on our device. Now we need to be able to see how we can take it from the device and pass it up to the server. And for that part, uh, required us to be able to work together to make some modifications to plug. Uh, what was added recently was PlugCon, you can get peer data. And get peer data allows the exposure of the address and port of the remote, but also the SSL cert if one was provided. That's the client SSL cert that's being provided. Now, this uh, requires that you're using the Cowboy 2 uh, greater than 2.1 adapter. And the function call for get peer data is available in plug 1.6 and later. So now we have the certificate available to us in plug. How do we get it in Phoenix using channels? We work together with Chris and, this, and the Phoenix team to be able to add a feature that we're we were really excited about, and I was excited about from working on other projects for other needs as well, to be able to expose this data. What you can do now in a uh, 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 well, upcoming uh, version is in your endpoint, you can declare that you want additional connection information for your WebSocket. And in this case, we're saying that we want access to that peer data that we saw. This isn't the only thing that you can have access to at this point, but you can also get access to X headers and URI. And let's see how we, uh, we get this. Well, in your user socket, when your web sockets connect, the problem that we experienced in the past was we never knew who the other end was. Information like we want to know what the remote IP address was, or maybe some of the headers that happened on the connection prior to upgrading the request. Or in this case, we want access to the SSL certificate information. So coming up in the next version of Phoenix, you'll see that you'll be able to pass connect three in user socket and have access to the connection info that you specified you wanted uh, back in the endpoint. And you'll be able to do interesting things like uh, determine that the traffic coming onto the WebSocket connection came from the location uh, that you were trusting. Or in this case, you'll be able to verify that the SSL certificate provided uh, came from your authority as well. So now with these additions, we have the ability to send the information all the way up. And at the beginning of this, I started off by saying that it was such an inspiration to be able to see the work that we all do together in this community to make things work. And the, I've experienced that over the last year, especially with trying to be able to uh, collaborate to make changes necessary to be able to uh, uh, get this information and have access to this so we can have this secure mechanism. Now, NervesHub uh, is going to be launched up on nerves-hub.org, uh, and we're opening that for private beta uh, for companies that are interested in shipping Nerves devices. Contact us if you want to be able to uh, start using it. Uh, we actually started using it at Latote in production, and I know that uh, there's some other companies that have as well. But the most important part here is that it's open source. 
Uh, Nerves Hub is probably one of the largest open source Phoenix example applications that I've seen. Uh, you can check it out on the GitHub repository for all kinds of different examples or to be able to help get involved as well. But it's in equally uh, important that it's open source because uh, even though we're hosting an instance of it at nerves-hub.org, if you're an enterprise customer and, you don't, uh, and you're, you're concerned over using uh, SaaS software, you can white label your own instance of it in your own control uh, and bring it up behind your own firewall so you can use it as well. So let's take a look at a little bit of uh, how this works. So here I have on the right, can everybody see that text? It's pretty big, kind of, right? Uh, here I have on the right, I have a uh, window that's showing a connected device. I have a Raspberry Pi up here on the, the, that's connected, let's say, to Nerves Hub. And on the right, I have my uh, uh, example application, which is uh, my uh, wonderful production-ready uh, uh, app. So from the command line, we can do a good amount of stuff. We can search for firmware. We can say uh, Nerves Hub firmware list. We have to type a password to unlock our certificate. And we can list out for this product, this example product, all of the different firmware that we have on Nerves Hub. Firmware uh, that's uploaded is uh, uh, bit for bit uh, evaluated to a UUID so that that UUID represents that version of firmware. And if we look on the device, we can, we can see that we're running uh, this one here, which is the uh, 0.1.1. Uh, if we go to check out the site, we can also see that our device is online and running that version, and uh, it's part of a QA group. With NerveSub, you define products, as we mentioned, that, uh, that would link to uh, your applications. And then those products have deployments. In this case, we have one deployment that shows this QA group. And that deployment can have version requirements to be able to ensure that if you need to step through multiple versions, you can make sure that somebody, like a device, for example, if you have to upgrade from um, like 1.0 one, to 1.5 before going to 2.0, you can structure things in that, ma in that manner. And what this is saying is that this deployment, uh, if it has the tag, if the firmware is tagged with this QA, uh, that the uh, device is connected will, uh, if the device is t uh, tagged with QA, it's eligible to receive that deployment. So let's uh, fix a critical bug in our application. This, uh, we, we make this critical update, changing the version number. And we're going to produce a new version of firmware. So we'll say mix firmware. And this is the part that uh, we saw in the beginning. Uh, it's producing an OTP release, and then uh, packaging it up in a way that makes it ready to be uh, distributed and put onto an embedded device. <clears throat> so now that we have our firmware file, uh, we can upload it to uh, publish it to NerveSub. Here's my publish command. That's wrapping terribly off the display. There we go. Uh, so I'm saying Nerve Sub Firmware Publish, and I'm going to pass the key, uh, firmware signing key that I already have on my machine called test. It's for the test group. So it'll sign it right away. And then I want to say deploy it right away to our QA group. So when I execute this command, it's going to verify some information. OK, the version number we can see changed. It's one, uh, 0, 1, 2, and the UUID is different because uh, we made source code modifications. So that produced a different uh, binary output. And we'll say, yeah, let's publish this firmware. And it goes, OK, let's sign it with this key. Enter your password to unlock your local key. And then uh, you have to enter your uh, local password to unlock your user certificate. And once it's uploaded to the server, instantly we'll see that our targets out in the field start getting the firmware update. And it's rebooting. Yay. Once the device comes back up, 
we can see active firmware UIDs match, and the update was successful. So Nerves Hub, we believe, is going to answer and fix a lot of the problems that we have with how do we deploy and manage firmware for production devices, for different device groups, sending things through test and QA. Um, it was a big effort to be able to put together this project because it spanned and, 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 put, and used so many different aspects of the ecosystem. We saw that, I mean, with Nerves Hub, it was such an enjoyment to be able to work on Phoenix things and front end and APIs and, and work with Mix and create command line interfaces. And just having the ability to have all of this power across the entire ecosystem was great. And with all that work, I'd like to spend a little time uh, thanking some of the people involved behind the project. Uh, first off, huge thanks to Hex for helping us out. Um, Uh, Eric and uh, uh, he goes by Potato Salad. Um, uh, he uh, uh, um, uh, wrote a lot of the cryptography that went into uh, Hex that does the password encryption uh, standards for the files that get placed for your Hex keys to secure them on your laptop. Uh, we worked together to be able to pull that portion out so that we can both work on it uh, at the same time and make sure that we can make that even better together. Uh, additionally, uh, Frank Hunleth. Uh, Frank. Uh, uh, created Nerves back in two, 2013, uh, and uh, several years later, uh, I joined up with him to be able to help uh, make it even better and work on the uh, mix integration pieces. Uh, over the years, Frank has been such a uh, fantastic uh, companion and, and friend to be able to talk to about problems and work together on uh, creating these fun solutions. Um, it's been quite a, an enjoyable experience. In addition, uh, Jeff McGee from Very, uh, he was a, uh, uh, a big help in uh, pushing forward a lot of the changes in Nerves Hub and making sure that we can drive forward on the Phoenix end of things. Uh, Tyler Pearson from Latote, uh, he uh, lended a big hand on how we structure our deployment. Uh, Tyler, was a, uh, Tyler is a brilliant uh, AWS uh, um, engineer. Uh, and uh, knows how to be able to uh, create lots of great deployment tools for web applications for Elixir and, and Phoenix. And you can see a lot of his work uh, in the uh, public repositories for Nerves Hub. Uh, if you're interested even as examples of how to be able to do uh, deployments to AWS for like Phoenix and web apps. Uh, the project sponsors, uh, we had SmartRent and Latote and Very uh, help uh, dedicate some engineering time from these people to work together on this project so that we can collaborate and build this so that we can all benefit from it. And in addition, there's an immense amount of community that's out there helping make Nerves better with anything, documentation fixes and example projects. Uh, if you feel like you want to get involved but don't know where, you can come and uh, uh, talk to us here or in Slack channel or on the Elixir forums. There's a number of different ways to be able to get in contact, um, but uh, you know, don't feel like there's nothing like it's too big to be able to grasp. We'll definitely uh, be able to help uh, steer you towards any way of contributing uh, that you'd like. And we really couldn't do this uh, offering uh, to the public without uh, support, uh, the financial backing from our Open Collective. Uh, there's uh, a lot of backend infrastructure that goes into running Nerves Project and Nerves Hub. Uh, as far as uh, continuous integration uh, of building uh, and pre-compiling the packages that take a really long time to compile on your system, that, we, uh, that you download as artifacts uh, when you're using NURBS. Um, all of our infrastructure that we have is uh, funded by the community, and also it's, it's great that when we need to be able to add new hardware to our test farm systems, uh, that we have uh, the ability of support from everybody out there. And with that, I just, I just really want to wrap to say that it's been one of the most enjoyable experiences coming to conferences and meeting the people and putting the technology in the hands of the attendees and learning things about how certain people will use certain things and, and also learning from others about the interesting packages that they've created and ways that we can 
build new devices and services using all of the, th the, the products that we have and all of the dependencies and packages that we have in our ecosystem. So I employ you to go forward and, and reach out and look at what's out there and take it, put it together, and build your own thing with it and show the world what you can do. Thanks.